So the next talk is uh, distributed optimization on multi-class SVM, and uh, it's uh, going to be given by uh, Max Albert and uh, Julian Zwer. Hello, Hello, everybody. I'm Max Albert. I'm from Taos Robert Müller's lab in TU Berlin, and he's Julian Zimmert at Myers Kloft's lab in Berlin. And we did this work together with Ern Dugan from Microsoft and Myers Kloft. And we are talking about distributed optimization of multi-class support vector machines. So um, we're doing extreme classification. That means that the number of classes is at least 1,000 in a lot of data sets, even the 10,000s or more. And um, we're doing multi-class, but it's not too hard to generalize this um, approach to multi-label. And uh, the big problem about extreme classification is that we have the new dimension, the number of classes. And in those data sets where we have um, millions of data points, we have hundreds of thousands of um, uh, the dimensions, we have hundreds of thousands of uh, features, and additionally we have those classes. So this is getting too large to run on a, a single core machine. So we have to uh, split the computation, and we also have to split the model, because the, um, the model, the weight vector, is typically the number of features times the number of classes. And this is, uh, with the current data sets, also reaching a level where we cannot put this into memory on a single machine. So um, we're doing SVMs, and the question is why SVMs? Um, part of it is that with a lot of data sets, linear classification is sufficient, especially in large text data sets, and um, we, <coughs> we can get uh, sparse solutions with SVMs. So this is, of course, it's sparse in the dual, this is good for the runtime, but it's uh, also often uh, sparse in the model itself. So after we train this, we don't really need to save uh, to this huge um, model uh, in a dense matrix. We only need this for training. And um, the problem is that there are a lot of different formulations for multi-class SVMs. So the obvious approach is just running one versus rest, running a lot of them in parallel. That's not a problem. But uh, empirical results show that so-called one in all support vector machines are more efficient than one versus rest in terms of accuracy. And even for one in all machines, there is Lindley, Waba, Watkins and Weston, Kram and Singer and a lot of others. And uh, we are focusing on Wat Weston and Watkins. This is because um, empirical results show that it is uh, extremely reliable. It is often a bit worse than Kram and Singer, but it has better theoretical guarantees. So for Kram and Singer, we can actually create examples where it will completely fail even if we get a huge amount of data. So Weston and Watkins is, in a sense, much more reliable. So let's look at how Weston and Watkins looks like. This is the primal formulation. We have um, the sum over the hinge losses um, of all data points that have a different, uh, of all classes that have uh, a different label. And the difference to Kram and Singer is that there is a sum instead of a max. And in the dual, this translates in the last line uh, to a, a box constraint that is separated over the dual variables. So uh, this is the reason why uh, this is easier to parallelize. Because if we look, if we are running a regular coordinate ascent algorithm, then uh, we would optimize a single dual variable alpha AC, and uh, the analytical solution to this looks like this. So the key uh, insight here is that it depends on the weight vectors of the, the class of the data point, the, tr the true class, and uh, the, the class of the dual point. And for regular dual coordinate ascent, it's not possible, uh, trivially possible, to parallelize the thing because if you parallelize two dual variables at the same time, then you're not, you don't have any convergence guarantees anymore. In most cases, you, you just diverge. So in this, uh, in this sense, here we can see that the, uh, because the dependency is only on two of those weight vectors, we can uh, parallelize the optimization of two points which have different weight vectors. And we can, uh, we can form groups of dual variables such that we can optimize up to C half dual variables in parallel 
with full convergence guarantee. Okay, so far now we have this one-dimensional subproblem, and we know that we can optimize two weight vectors in parallel. And what are we going to do? We try to optimize them in parallel, and we want to optimize as much as possible in parallel, or as many as possible in parallel. And the solution to this is the one uh, factorization problem in graph theory. And I don't want to buffer you with the solution, but it's kind of like take a uh, soccer league. You have n teams, and at each um, play day, you want to have uh, every team to play. So um, this is kind of the solution for the problem. And in fact, and, and if this one factorization of graph, you can parallelize or optimize. Sorry, you can group up two teams at every uh, day for n, n, n half games. So if we are in an extreme classification. This means that we have thousands of classes, and this would mean we have a big overhead <coughs> if you would group up every team with every team, and this uh, which scales quadratically. So in reality, we join classes to groups, and then we consider these groups as classes and uh, optimize them jointly in groups. So we apply this, uh, the mentioned schedule to, to, to those groups. Uh, inside the groups, when we have two groups, we um, update, update sequ them sequentially with the solving algorithm of flip linear. And in reality, when we um, parallelize this, uh, each core optimizes one of those groups. And then we switch the groups and optimize again on different cores. Now we claim that we distribute our computation. And this is a hard problem, to going from multi-core to uh, multi-machine optimization um, due to the overhead at the network. So it is crucial to um, keep the communication low. And there are some principles that are really important that even though we have for the fast computation dense weight matrices, we just send the sparse <coughs> models over the network and we send only the changes back so that we really reduce the communication. Besides that, we add, add another overlay of groups for different machines so, we, so that we exchange as least data as possible. So this means that every node has classes. The classes are paired in groups. And, between, and each node has certain groups. <coughs> and we, in each node, or we um, exchange the groups in, uh, to optimize them. And then again, for the nodes, we um, have a schedule that um, matches the different <coughs> kind of node groups together to optimize them in parallel. To the results, um, we trained on large class uh, on, on text data from the LSHTC repository. This is uh, bag of words data, which means it's really high dimensional but sparse. And we show you here two results. One is the LSHGC large data set. One is the LSHGC 2011, which is um, the biggest multi-class data set there with uh, 400,000 samples and 30,000 classes. Um, for, as an example, for one versus rest, we used the libinear multi-core version. And uh, for completeness, for another <coughs> all-in-one support vector machine, we present the libinear Crumb and Singer implementation. What one can see that um, um, all, all in one support vector machine outperform one versus the rest by up to 5% accuracy, which can be significant. And which is, I think, even more important the model density is much lower up to uh, magnitude. That means your final model is a tenth or uh, is a magnitude smaller than the model you get from one versus the rest while having the same prediction cost. To the runtime, we run one versus the rest and our server on 16 cores in total. So if we distribute it on two machines, we just use eight and eight cores. Um, one can see that our server is faster than one versus the rest in nearly all cases. We're, um, if you are distributed, it's hard to shrink because the overhead gets the, uh, determined because um, you kind of you have a few samples in the end to optimize left, so we you just send a lot of model around. This is the, the reason why we are slower for uh, large oh sorry for large uh, C values. 
Um, but for smaller zebras, and uh, in effect, we get the best <coughs> uh, accuracy around C equal to 1, which is here. Uh, our mm, server is quite a bit faster than the one versus the rest, even though um, it has, and it has much higher accuracy. And we are able to distribute it on different machines, which means that you can solve huge models uh, using more resources, while, for example, Kraman Singer is restricted to one machine and you cannot use uh, more memory, or you can just use the memory you have in one. <coughs> so, uh, summary. This is the first step. It's not a perfect work, but we are working on uh, getting the parallelization better, so to get even faster. Um, we think we have a smart schedule to do the best parallelization, and it's a nice theory, though in reality we had to do some adjustments, but it still converges well. And we show that um, all-in-one support vector machines outperform uh, one versus the rest, give better accuracy, and can be trained faster. And for future work, we want to have a smarter shrinking, so we get even faster. And might try to um, parallelize uh, other all-in-one support vector machines like Kraman Singer. And we want to go on bigger data sets because our solver is really able to use a lot of computer, computational power. And um, our feeling is that those data sets are not big enough to really exploit this well. Thank you for your attention. Um, you can find the code on this web page. <laughs> Questions? Have a few minutes. Yes. Uh, if we uh, try to parallelize Lindley Waba in the same way? Um, no, the, we have a parallelization for Lindley Waba, which we didn't present here, but um, it uses a different technique. So there we have some auxiliary variables in the dual, and we uh, can uh, separate the problem into, for each class by using the auxiliary variable, and then we're doing ten, uh, one update step there. It's uh, memory if, if the memory efficiency is better there for Lindy Baba, but uh, the, um, the accuracy is much worse for smaller Cs. That's why we didn't uh, include it here. Any other question? If not, uh, let's uh, thank Max and Julian again. <laughs>